Hi, my name is Aaron. I'm with Fleetistics, and today we're going to talk about uh, GPS asset trackers. And the goal here is to save you a lot of money by helping you make the right decision on an asset tracker. Uh, we've been doing GPS tracking, vehicle tracking, fleet tracking, and management for over 16 years. And most of our customers have assets. So they have the vehicles and they are looking for an asset tracker as well. Uh, we have a couple different asset trackers here that we're going to go over and those asset trackers can be put on anything from an ATV to a train to a boat to yellow iron. So um, if you like the content, please hit the like button or the thumbs up button down below. Let us know. Also, uh, if you want to submit comments or questions, we'll be glad to jump on those and answer questions about anything in general, but uh, most importantly, asset tracking. So let's take a look at some different asset trackers. We've got a couple asset trackers here, uh, and on these units, you'll notice that we have backup batteries. Uh, this one's a pretty big backup battery. We've got another unit that has a smaller backup battery, a uh, smaller footprint, but each of these asset trackers has a unique um, set of features that you want to be aware of, be looking at when you're shopping for asset trackers. Uh, first of all, the backup battery, like I said. Uh, backup batteries, there's a bit of a misnomer or, or understanding about backup batteries and really what they're supposed to do. When you have a small vehicle tracker like this, it has a small battery in it, about the size of a quarter, like a CR2525, and that provides what we call in the business a last gasp transmission. All right, It's not meant to track more than maybe five, ten minutes after the power is lost from the unit. Um, the backup batteries on asset trackers could potentially last for weeks or months depending on how the units are programmed. So it's not just enough to know that they have a backup battery, you have to actually understand how the unit is programmed to behave once the main power source is disconnected from the unit. So if your asset gets stolen and they, you know, they disconnect the power to the battery, then the backup battery is all you have to get your unit back or your uh, asset back. Um, looking at this particular asset tracker, you'll notice that this one has a cap on the end. All right, um, you say, well, what's the big deal with the cap? Well, uh, something as simple as this can save you a lot of money. If you have, let's say, uh, storm pumps and you put harnesses on all those different storm pumps, as you rent those pumps out, you might be able to have a small group of, of trackers that you can move from asset to asset as the pumps are deployed to the field. So you don't need uh, a tracker on every single pump that you have. And by having a disconnect uh, wiring, uh, wiring harness here, you can, you can you know, move around. The downside to this is it's a potential penetration point for water. So think about your application. Um, on this device here, it's got a backup battery that's about half the size of this unit here, but you'll notice that this is a permanent wire into the unit. This one's going to be more weatherproof, more dustproof, you know, it's going to be IP67, 68 rated, as is this one. Uh, and you can go on to Wikipedia and look up IP67 or 68 and see what the definition is of those, but really it's just a degree of weatherization and ruggedness that units have to pass or electronics have to pass in order to get that certain standard, minimum standard designation. Uh, a unit like this is great, a motorcycle, ATV, it's small, it can be hidden, it's got a reasonably sized backup battery, which might go for a week if it's only programmed to, let's say, transmit once a day when the, uh, when the main power source is lost. So uh, economical, good device, things of that nature. Now, we have another unit here, this is called the Go Rugged. And the Go Rugged is built like a tank, I mean it is just solid, and if you actually can see in the video, I don't know if you can, but you'll see that it's actually what we call potted in that it's embedded, all the electronics are embedded in silicone, so it's super tough and super weatherized. I mean, you just cannot get water inside of that, that epoxy there. Um, the, the one thing about this particular device, it does not have a backup battery on it. This can be used on heavy equipment with various harnesses, so uh, you can hook it up with a three-wire harness and wire it just like any of these other devices. You can also hook it up with a uh, J bus uh, six or nine pin harness uh, depending on what you want to track and how you want to track it uh, a cat cable so you can get specific codes from Caterpillar uh, you've got lots of flexibility in the go unit the other thing about the go unit that's super important to understand is that if you have the go system with us then the go rugged can be in your same go account and what that allows you to do is see both devices vehicles and assets in the same user interface uh, these track the same as the vehicle units and we can put these in base mode and maybe have your vehicle trackers in pro or pro plus mode if you need ELD but 
um, having it in the same report with the same alerts and things like that has a lot of a lot of benefits. So uh, you know these are things to to take into consideration. And whether it be a Go system in you know a Go rugged and Go system or a different device in your current platform, it's it's all the same. I mean, obviously we'd love to do business with you, but if you're already on something. Uh, think about what device that vendor might have for you and whether or not that's going to be the right fit for you. If not, give us a call because these types of devices, um, you know, they can go into a, uh, a different type of interface that we have and it's super uh, inexpensive uh, if all you need is like basically dots on a map. This is going to give you much more of a fleet management tool for assets. This is going to give you more of that recovery um, inventory location type uh, information uh, the way we have it set up. So, um, you know, that pretty much concludes the information on the asset tracking. We're going to have a web page and we'll link it up inside the video so you can click on it and you can go to our website and we'll have more information there about installation considerations and things like that. Uh, we'll have like a checklist there so you can kind of look through all that and make sure that you're getting all the right information to help you make the best decision possible. And again, if you uh, like the video, appreciate the content, Hit the like button down below, give us a thumbs up, share it on Facebook, which would be great, or tag your friends in it so they, they get a chance to take a look at it. And uh, you know, let us know if you have any questions. We'd love to answer questions for you, whether it be about these units or if you've got a unit and you have a question, if we can help you, we'd be more than glad to help you no matter what uh, platform you're using. So um, that's pretty much it for the video. Visit us online at fleetistics.com or give us a call at 855-300-0527. Thanks and we'll see you on the next video.